I'm Robert Benet, and I'm the choreographer of Orpheus Alive, which I created with composer Missy Mazzoli, who is here on Zoom with me. Hi, I'm Missy Mazzoli, composer, and um, uh, Rob, it's great to see you. <laughs> you too. And it's in the context of quarantine, it's really fun to remember back on this whole process of creating this ballet, which just premiered a couple months before we all went into yeah. um, COVID quarantine. Um, I think one of my favorite memories actually happened years before then when we had our first meeting and you, me, and then our playwright um, librettist, uh, Rosamond Small, were to have together in your apartment just thinking of like what this could be. And I remember we knew it was gonna be the Orpheus story, but there's so many different ways to go and we really felt compelled to make it something original. But at that point, the ballet was just a series of pieces, a piece of paper, a collection of little white pieces of paper, like tacked onto a bulletin board. It was the most like insane, like beautiful mind, like crazy <laughs> person kind of thing. And I, I remember having tremendous faith in us, but also feeling like, I have no idea how this is going to be a ballet. I know we'll figure it out, but I don't know how we're going to get there. <laughs> yeah, the adrenaline got us through. Yes. Yeah, well, and I remember the moment that I suddenly became aware of how wild it was that we turned that into something was, I was in New York so we could keep working together and I came over to your apartment and you just said, okay, I'm gonna play through the whole thing. And I couldn't believe it because it was so cool to hear all, it's like all the emotional ideas and all the plot ideas and time suddenly fused. And to feel that it had shape and a rise and fall and this incredible emotional journey was so exciting because I could, as soon as you have the music, you can start to imagine the dance. And it was like crossing this massive threshold for me, but also just that, you know, an orchestral score is such a massive thing. But the fact that you could give me quite a true sense of what it was going to be just in the room you are right now on Zoom was the mm -hmm. cool thing. <laughs> yeah. No, it's truly amazing that we, um, to like be here now, or to remember the process of rehearsing and then yeah. to think that it all started with this insane collection of ideas. Well, an idea on your part to really work with the Orpheus story and then just like brainstorms, like from all different areas. Well, and I think um, you really pushed us with the brainstorm because I had this Orpheus idea and you were like, really, that's every, <laughs> opera ever and I said yes but it's rare in ballet so you really said if we're gonna do Orpheus we need to depart from it in a huge way and I think without mm -hmm. your musical perspective on it we may not have pushed the myth as far as we did and I'm so glad we did yeah one of my other favorite memories is just like in, in that sense like really pushing the dancers to contribute musically um like you know, for those people, unlucky few who didn't see the ballet, um, the dancers at one point sing, you know, and this is the moment when Orpheus goes to the underworld and we needed a way to sonically make the underworld different from the um, upper world, the real world. And so that one way was to have everybody sing. And I just remember these rehearsals um, and I, I realized, I, I kind of had this strange idea that because the dancers were so good at what they do, which is dancing, um, I was like, they'll be good at everything. These are just masterful people. And they were, most of them were exceptionally good at singing, but they were so scared. Yeah. Um, and it was this really fun process of like, um, just being like, getting them to open up on, in that sense musically. And then I was like, of course, like as a musician, if someone asked me to dance on stage, I would be like, you are out of your mind. Yeah. I'd be terrified. And so, I ended up, you know, I had such respect and admiration for them that they wanted to contribute and were able to contribute to it musically. And that moment is one of my favorite in the ballet where they, they start singing and they're moving and you have this beautiful repetitive ritualistic movement. Um, so yay to trying new things. <laughs> yeah, well, and I remember it was such a big ask for the dancers that we decided to teach them in order to sort of show them <laughs> that we were with them, you and I sang for them first, and neither of us are really singers. And we were no. like, okay, if we're gonna ask them to do it, we gotta do it. We're both just sweating in front of 60 dancers. Yeah, yeah. 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 We got the And like, you knew them. Yeah. Like, I was like, I was like this like stranger who like showed up and was like, now you're going to sing for me, children. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
I felt like really out of place. But we, it, you're right. It's really important to put yourself in that vulnerable place when you're asking people to go there. Yeah. So I'm really glad that it worked out that way. Yeah. Cool. Well, it was so good to reflect on this with you. I miss you and I miss working on this. I miss you too. And I can't wait to do that, that piece again and many more in the yes. future. Yes, me too.